Hey what's up, how's it going? My name is Toby and in today's video I'm going to show you how you can create this awesome augmented reality head tracking filter for TikTok so you can use it and share it with your friends. To achieve this effect we need the official effect house software by TikTok so you just need to go to effecthouse.tiktok.com all the links are in the video description and log in with your TikTok uh, account and then just download and install the software to your PC or Mac. But before we jump into the Effect House software, we will also need to have a nice 3D model, something like a helmet that, you, that we can attach to our head. So in my case, I went to Sketchfab. I'll also put the link in the video description and I found this model. Basically, you could just go to the website and a helmet, then just scroll through and also make sure to select downloadable. If you see this little dollar sign on the top right here, this will be a a purchase object so it will cost money but they are also just ones that are really nice and that can be downloaded for completely free and I found this particular model you can just click to download the 3d model and choose the GLB format especially the one with the texture size 1k because the whole effect can be max 5 megabytes large so we are already here at the um, upper limit okay so after downloading this model and after installing the effect house software we can just open it up and this will be the launch screen and then we will just create a new project and it will take a few seconds and here we are in a new project we can click uh, click on show 3d here um, to see our scene and uh, we're just gonna get started right away so the very first thing we want to do is import the 3D model by clicking on this import button here on the left bottom corner, kind of. And then just head to the folder, we have stored the model, just select it, click open, import vertex color as well. So click all the check marks here if they aren't already selected and import. Alright, so now we have the 3D model and all kind of materials and textures and if we now select the model and just drag it into our scene, we will see we got the model in here. But as we can see on the right side in the preview window, if you can't see the preview window, uh, you need to click on this phone icon here. Well, the model is much too big. So let's just click on the model, then select scale up here and scale it down just a little bit like that. Okay, so this size should be kind of fine. So next up we want to set up the head tracking, which is quite easy. We can just select add object, AR tracking, head tracker. And uh, if we will very quickly disable the 3D model up here, then we will see this, this dummy head with a kind of tracking mesh on here. So this will basically represent a head in our actual video feed. So for example, on, on the right here, can just quickly go to the preview window and maybe choose something that is more suitable for us. So let's quickly scroll through here. Uh, maybe a single person turning their head like that. All right, so this will basically be the uh, head mesh of the person. And to now get our 3D model tracked to it, it's very easy. Just take the 3D model and drag it into the head tracker. And as we can see now, it's following the head. Obviously it's much too small again. So then go back to the scale and just, oh. okay, maybe we'll just rather use this gizmo here because the scale on the right transform is uh, a bit janky to work with. Okay, so then we'll just click on this middle um, cube here, scale it up, scale it up until it's on the size where it's quite uh, where it's fitting quite well. Maybe you will just move it a bit backwards like that and voila, there we have it. Okay, so this is already quite nice, but maybe we also wanna add some animation to it to make it even cooler. And for that, we're gonna just add some logic. So our visual scripting window down here is the uh, place where all the logic happens. So if we wanna have something moving or reacting to certain things that happen in the camera window here, then we will need to do something in the visual scripting. So the idea is to have this front part here of the helmet just move up and then maybe rotate a little bit like that uh, so that um, 
we can see the face of the, of the person. And in order to achieve this effect, we first want to go ahead and um, get the transform of this object. So we need to select the object we want to manipulate and then select transform and then just get transform here on the right side. And so now we have the option to modify the transform values within the visual scripting. So next up, we want to add a node by right click add node and we want to just search for transform set transform. So we want to take this object, plug it in here and then we want to do add another node, which we want to call lerp. Lerp stands for linear uh, interpolation. So it basically means that when we transform an object, it will not just jump from this to that, but there will be a smooth motion going on from the first, from the starting position to the end position. So we need that twice because we will lerp um, between the positions as well as the rotations. And we also need to change this from a single number to a vector 3, which describes the basically the x, y and z coordinates of any object. Okay, so then we can connect this to the position and the rotation. And now we need to find out which should be our starting position and our end position. So for that we can just take this front part here and then just manually move it into a position we would like it to be in the end so that it's, it doesn't overlap maybe like this. This could be nice or even rotate it a bit more and then move it, uh, move it upwards. Okay, so now we have the values here on the right side and we want to go into our visual script. I'm just going to increase this a little bit so we can see a, a bit better. Uh, can we make this a bit smaller? Perfect. All right, so we got our two lerps. We got our transform, set transform. And now we will go ahead and set our final values. So our stop values for the position. And we could just go to the right side, select the Y and just copy this one like that. And also take the Z uh, like that, copy and paste like that. So we get the stub values. And we also want to take the rotation. This is a bit tricky because it's basically showing 323.6, but as we are talking about a 360 degree si uh, circle, uh, we will actually need to take the difference between 360 and 323 and we also need to take the negative value. So I don't know why, uh, I mean it's always sometimes tricky to work with transform so we need to do a little bit of math yourself. But for our vector here we won't need 323 but we rather need minus 40 on the x-axis because the difference between basically the whole rotation and um, the value we want to go to is minus 40, so 360 minus 40. Hope this is kind of clear. And in order to achieve this effect, so in order to get this effect going, we can actually now reset the um, can reset the values we entered here because the start position will be just zero. So zero on all the values uh, except the scale, of course. So next up, we want to decide when the effect should start and um, the start note here will trigger as soon as we will open our TikTok camera which might not be the best moment to um, start our effect so we have uh, if we open our notes we have a lot of different event types so I would now take the uh, video record but you could potentially also finger touch one point which would mean that the effect will start as soon as you click on uh, a tap on your screen. All right, but we can't just plug in the video record to the set transform as we also need to have a step value for the lerping motion. And for that, um, we will take a timer. So we will um, add a timer node and then on the uh, on beginning of the video record, we will start a timer. So this will decide on how long it will take for this uh, front part here to move up and rotate. So this could be something like two seconds, 2.5 maybe to make it a bit more dramatic. And we will then say, okay, um, 
we take the progress number and we will put it into our lerp vector. And finally, we will also need to set the actual transform because what it's now, what's now happening is we will start a timer maybe from um, 2.5, uh, from zero to 2.5 seconds. And uh, within this seconds, well, the position will change from our start to our end position, but we do not uh, update the transform value in the actual scene. So that we means we need to take our update node and just put that into the set transform. So now let's take a look. Oh yeah, that looks very nice. Although the rotation comes in a bit too early, right? So the uh, front part is kind of going through the helmet and in order to not have this, we will need to um, have some kind of delay in between their rotation value. So for that, we're just gonna do a very little trick. So we're gonna add a uh, greater than node and also a if node and we're gonna add another timer. So the idea is to say, okay, we will only start the rotation when we are already at half of the duration. So that means we're just gonna take the progress number, gonna put it into A and if this value, you can already see it going up here, is about half so about 0.5 um, this is not the absolute number by the way this is the relative number so if we would go to 10 seconds it, this value would still go between 0 and 1 um, it makes it a lot easier for us because let's say we want to change this duration later on then uh, we would have to um, change this value too but now if we want to want to just start it as at 50 percent of the timer then this will stay no matter what's the actual duration so if that is the case we just want to put this in our if so if our value is greater than 0.5 we want to start another timer and this timer will be for the uh, rotation vector so we will just remove this connection and we want to take the progress number and step this into this vector. So now we will go up and uh, in theory it should only start rotating after about... Oh, so we have another 2.5 seconds. Maybe we're just going to take one second here. And let's take a look what happens. So nothing is happening yet. Why is that? So I forgot actually to connect the uh, tick timer, so the execution with the if uh, statement. So this is because um, all these uh, nodes that have this basically the screen input, they need to have information on when to execute, right? So when should there be uh, this if statement, when should it um, decide whether it should co actually compare these two values. So now as you can see with this little logic we got the effect working and to test it out we can just click preview and TikTok and um, then there will be a QR code and you can just scan it within your TikTok account and try out the effect. If you are happy with the result just click on submit and you need to fill out a few infos about it, upload a thumbnail and that's it. That's all you need to do to create this awesome head tracking TikTok effect. So I hope you learned something from this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.